When we're thinking about failure, I think a really natural place to start, and maybe I'm biased by my personal experience growing up, but um, is, is the holiday season. Um, you know, the holiday season in many ways is very failure prone from, you know, a, an overcooked turkey in the oven um, to uh, this really lovely example we have from Starbucks who uh, ran a social media campaign one holiday season, one Christmas, where they wanted people to hashtag spread the cheer. And I mean, this seems basically as far from a complex system as you can get, right? It seems pretty benign. Um, Starbucks wanted people to tweet nice things like, I like gingerbread lattes, hashtag spread the cheer. And in fact, they also sponsored an ice skating rink in the UK to kind of, and they had a screen where they were projecting these tweets. So, you know, trying to get the, the, the community of, of latte, gingerbread latte lovers involved. But Starbucks isn't naive, so, you know, they had a content filter on this screen to try to prevent let's say negative tweets from showing up. But they had a little problem with the content filter. Uh, it turned out it was broken. So you ended up with tweets like this. Starbucks was involved in this tax and wage controversy at the time, so this wasn't the hashtag spread the cheer message that they were going for, but this is the message they started to get. So I like buying coffee that tastes nice from a shop that pays tax. So I avoid at Starbucks, hashtag spread the cheer. And it shows up on this screen. Um, a couple of people are a little less subtle uh, in their critique. These two show up on this screen. Uh, and then, you know, it kind of explodes, right? Some people realize this and tweet about this, and then you can imagine what happens next, right? Uh, this just avalanche of tweets. But we see this same kind of example in lots of different contexts. We see it in finance, where a company called Knight Capital, they were a well-respected trading firm, they lost half a billion dollars in half an hour because of a series of small mistakes in their technology. That's a lot, even for Wall Street. Um, we see it in the airlines, right? Whether it's BA or Porter or Southwest or Delta or United, where they have problems where their whole fleets of planes are grounded, not because of problems with their, with their pilots or their passengers or their airplanes, but because of problems with their reservation systems. Somebody trips over a cord, or there's a fire in a data center and the backup's not working right, or there's just kind of some breakdown that we never really hear what the reason was. So these things all have this kind of thing in common that we talked about. Small errors cause big failures. They kind of snowball into these big problems. But when we, when we looked a little bit deeper, we found that there was kind of a, a, a deeper truth to this as well. And we looked at research from um, kind of an unlikely person to study this. He was a sociologist from the 1970s, 1980s. Um, and he looked at things like, like Three Mile Island. And what he, he kind of came up with really this formula for disaster. So when he looked at systems failures, he saw that if systems were complex and what he called tightly coupled, they were in this, what we call the danger zone. And so what do I mean by complexity? In this context, complexity means that the system looks a lot like a web. There's a lot of different pieces that connect. And it's also hard to see inside. It's hard to understand what's going on inside the system. That, in a nutshell, is complexity. Tight coupling, it sounds like a really kind of fancy term. It's borrowed from engineering. But basically what it means is there's not a lot of margin for error. So when you combine these two things, when you have complexity and tight coupling, you end up in this danger zone. And in the 1980s, when Charles Perrault and this sociologist studied it, he, there were basically not a lot of systems in this danger zone. It was nuclear power, it was big industrial systems, it was things like the space shuttle. But now, we see this kind of dynamic in many, many places. We see it in finance, we see it in healthcare, uh, we see it in transportation, aviation, driverless cars, for example. And we also see it in our homes. Um, and so what was once a really niche problem, we think is now a much more pressing concern. The good news is that there are solutions.